Researchers at Thomas Jefferson University in Philadelphia have studied the effect of neuroemotional technique on a group of cancer survivors who continued to have emotional distress long after their cancer treatment concluded. Functional MRI assessed their brains before and after NET treatment. The following interviews were conducted by Dr. Scott Walker. I've been in the mental health and medicine and integrative health and medicine worlds for over 20 years. And I've really never seen another intervention that is so effective and efficient at alleviating the distress of difficult or distressing events that people have had in their lives. From a brain scan perspective, uh, we found some very interesting things. And uh, you know, for the most part, um, the brain changes significantly as the result of doing the neuroemotional technique. And, and that to me is what was, you know, as a brain imaging guy, um, seeing the changes to, to me were among the more dramatic that I've ever seen with regard to any kind of intervention, any kind of medical or, or psychological type of therapy for people. So that to me was very impressive in and of itself. Um, I, you know, for the most part, I had never seen the brain change and react so, so significantly and in such a short period of time. So for example, when we've done you know, studies of Parkinson's disease, we see changes going on, but usually they're very subtle and, uh, and they take a long time. Uh, same thing with depression and so forth. But this was showing very substantial changes in a very short period of time. And that to me is very exciting as a brain imaging person. This is effective, um, people feel better. And what I love is that all the areas of their lives change. Even if you're working on one discrete problem, other things get better as their physiology improves using NET. I found myself crying. I'd be sitting somewhere and I'd just start crying and I didn't know why. It didn't happen every day, but it happened enough that for me it was an issue. And um, so I had to go through, you know, the surgery, the uh, chemo, the radiation, but I had a lot of complications from the surgery. Everything was bad, but the opened wound was the worst because I could see it. I was intrigued by a couple of things. One was the ability to identify the trauma and in looking at how uh, the, the person was evaluated with the muscle strength and the muscle testing, um, very quickly got to the fact that, that part of what was causing the actual trauma today was related to a trauma that had happened to this person back when they were seven. We went through a lot of different steps and she thought that this was tied into something that happened to me much earlier in my life. I remembered I had been in an accident. Um, I had been climbing on a uh, two by four on carpenter leg things. Oh, uh -huh. And um, I fell off of it and the two by four went into my leg and it created a hole. And I ended up in the hospital and it was not um, stitched right either. It turned out to be a huge infection. And I felt somehow I was responsible for that as a kid because everybody was so angry about what had happened. And so then, uh, and I still have the scars from that, and then it made sense. You know, I said, oh yeah, this looks very much and tied into the same size of my breast, what happened in my leg. Lots of people have cancer, and not everyone has this kind of emotional response to it. I mean, it's obviously always upsetting, but some people can deal with it more effectively than others, and sometimes it's these earlier issues, traumas, and so forth that, that come back into the, to the, to the fray that cause that greater response in the moment for that individual. At the end, when that was tied into it, the, yeah, there was this sense of relief, uh, you know, like later that day, and then the next day, the next day, and I'm like, to my husband, I said, I'm not crying anymore. I'm not, this isn't happening just out of the blue anymore. And I said, the whole thing worked. What we see um, objectively is what you noticed when you talked to these participants their quality of life improves. And to have an intervention where quality of life improves after sh such a short period of time, that's a big deal. And so you were getting the idea that there were going to be functional MRIs done before and after. Mm -hmm. And yeah. do you know that you actually saw some of the functional MRIs before and after? 
and you were the first one, first MEP practitioner in the world who has ever seen that. I got to see inside my patient's brain oh, and to right. see how it changes with this technique. That changed the way I do NET. Oh, it did? It did, because you know what? I feel a new sense of confidence, which is what I'd like to instill in the people watching this video, that it really works. And what was most amazing is their brains changed very quickly in just three to five sessions. Many of them, right at three or four sessions, felt significantly better and their brains were completely different. The beauty of neuroscience, especially with the beauty of neuroimaging, is that there's a picture and a picture does paint a thousand words. So when, uh, if I were to go to my colleagues in psychiatry, for example, I could show them clinical data on thousands of people that they all feel better. But if I can show them the brain scan before and this is what's happening to it, and then here's what their brain does after, then suddenly in their minds they say, oh, something really happened, not only <laughs> clinically, but something really happened physiologically. And it feels big to the patient. That's what's yeah. most important. Every single one of the patients felt significantly and dramatically better. There was not a single patient, I don't know of another study that can say every single patient felt better. The reality is that acceptance of any intervention really requires data and research. So anecdotal reports are insufficient. And a new intervention requires actually a lot of data for it to be accepted in the different therapeutic communities. Okay. And that's why this study was so important, why we're so grateful to the One Research Foundation for providing the funding and all of the wonderful people who contribute to the One Research Foundation so that these kinds of studies can occur. You know, if you look at other interventions for <clears throat> whether they be physical disorders or emotional issues, they take a lot of data, a lot of time. A new drug could take tens of millions of dollars before it's to market because it has to go through rigorous study. This is just the way of the world. <laughs> uh, from the bottom of my heart, from the NET teaching team, from the One Research Foundation, from the patients that the practitioners serve all over the world, that uh, we are all deeply indebted to the efforts of you and your team at Integrative Medicine. I appreciate that. My gratitude is to you for developing this wonderful intervention, for your wife who's helped to develop it, Dr. Deb Walker, the One uh, Research Foundation who supports this kind of work, and for all of those uh, wonderful practitioners who further the cause and the, 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 the donors who, who help to make all of this possible. All right, well, it's our net effect, isn't it? It sure is. <laughs> okay, God bless. Thank you. Thank you to all current and past supporters of the One Research Foundation. Visit us at onefoundation.org. For more information on NET, visit netmindbody.com.